Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Um, it's a little bit windy. What can I say? <laughs> I'm really enjoying this um, British weather. It's uh, full of um, surprises, a lot of noises. Um, my dog is petrified, but uh, yeah, nevertheless, uh, is, um, it's a joy really to be together with you. It's a joy to share worship with all of you. A uh, special thank to all the people that um, are making this worship possible, and uh, especially for the technical assistance that we have received today. Thank you very, very much. Um, as many of you know, uh, after worship, you're going to have uh, some refreshment, and then we are going to have our church meeting. Um, everybody is invited, so I hope that many of you can stay um, for that. So let us uh, take a deep breath. Let us uh, rejoice because we are family, because God loves us, and because we are here. So just um, have a brief look to the left and to the right, just to welcome everyone, and just, uh, as you see that, just to recognize how beautiful it is when people are meeting each other at the presence of God. So let us start our worship. Um, also, hello to the people who are uh, following us from home. And um, let us, uh, for our call of uh, worship, let us uh, read together some verses from Psalm 37. And as usual, please do join in with the bold type. Psalm 37. Don't get worked out about evil people. Don't envy those who do wrong. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord, making your integrity shine like the dawn. Be still for the Lord. Don't get worked up about these folk who get their way. Give up anger and rage. These schemers will be cut down to size. Soon the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, the meek shall inherit the land. The victory of the just comes from the Lord they are stronghold in difficult times. Sorry. Amen. So let us pray. We are here because God has called us. Let us invite God to direct our thoughts and our prayers. Let us ask God to move in our hearts and minds. Let us ask God to teach and show us what it means to be loved and to love. Amen. So let us sing together our first hymn, Lord, we turn to you for mercy.
Let us pray. God of goodness and mercy, of gentleness and kindness, God of righteousness and faithfulness, be the light of our salvation and sustain our souls. We offer the daily tasks that consume us to you, for we accomplish nothing without your grace. We submit to your will what we should, that we should love you with our everything and love our neighbors and even our enemies as we learn to love ourselves. And so we pray, renew us and transform us by your steadfast love so that we become more and more your people. Gracious God, we confess that we nurture enmity, that we hold grudges against those we think of as enemies. We confess that sometimes, rather than looking for reconciliation and peace, we focus on who started it or how it began, turning the discussion into a win-lose situation. We know that life is not so simple, and so help us to know what to do, how to respond. For sometimes we should turn the other cheek. Sometimes we should keep things in check. Sometimes we should simply turn and walk away for our own good. As we come before you, we confess that the complexities of life confuse us. And so help us to understand how we can follow you throughout those complexities. As we take a few moments of silence to think about the past week, we ask you for leading into a path of peace and reconciliation. Almighty, no matter what we have done, you forgive us. And no matter what they have done, and whoever they are, you forgive them too. You forgive our enemies even when we don't. And you forgive us even when we don't deserve it, or even when we don't forgive ourselves. And so we give thanks to you because you are a forgiving God. Amen. So let us respond to God and God's forgiveness by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And please feel free to use whatever language or version you feel more comfortable with. Okay, it has gone, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now hear our first reading. <clears throat> um, so our first reading is from Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 to 11 and verse 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, 
Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither ploughing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Let us sing together.
Um, And our second reading is from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, oh sorry, if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our refuge. Amen. We all roughly know the story of Joseph. Despite having 11 brothers, he was the most loved son. Because of that, Joseph's brothers did not like him and were jealous of him. Joseph was blessed with dreams, and he knew how to interpret them. One day, he dreamt about his brothers bowing down before him together with the moon and the stars. After this dream, his brothers, tired of his arrogance and privileges, decided to take action and sold him into slavery to a traveling caravan who took him to Egypt. After many vicissitudes and some time spent in prison, Joseph succeeds in interpreting Pharaoh's dreams and becomes chief administrator of Egypt. Some years later, a shortage of food in Canaan forced Joseph's brothers to travel to Egypt to buy grain. They have to deal with Joseph, who immediately recognized them, even if they do not recognize him. From the moment they meet until the end of the transaction, The story is full of twists, until we finally arrive at the scene that we have heard today. Joseph stands in front of his brothers, revealing to them his identity. His brothers are speechless, both surprised and frightened of what might come. Joseph addresses them by saying, And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. Joseph's story is a very well-known story. It is a story with a happy end that reassures us. However, Joseph's story brings in it one of the oldest questions around God and God's intervention in our lives. 
Throughout the story, it is important to notice that God is absent. God is never mentioned as a character in the story, nor does God address any of the characters. It is only in retrospect that God's action can be seen. Joseph recognizes how God has been present and at work throughout his life when he stops and looks at all that has happened in the past years. And I guess this happens to us as well. God talks and manifests God's self to us in many different ways. But I wonder if sometimes we misunderstand our relationship with God and we confound faith with the expectation that we have to hear God every moment and every day. And if this does not happen, we might become anxious and wonder what we do wrong in our relationship with God. God is always present and constantly leading us, and God has a plan for humanity. But it is not that God, as a superhero, appears when we are in distress, performs an intervention, and then disappears. Rather, God is always with us, and our relationship with us is experienced in our daily lives as a learning by doing experience. We live in a culture that is becoming more and more fast. All has to be quickly delivered, quickly communicated, quickly decided, and quickly experienced. I have recently subscribed to an app that summarizes books. In 15, 30 minutes, you can either read or listen to the main points of the book. This enables you to know the content of a book while you are doing something different, as walking the dog, ironing, driving, etc. Of course, I couldn't resist, and so I check if the Bible was in the catalog. It isn't. At first, I thought, of course the Bible is not there. This is not a cool book, you know, at the top of the rank. But then in reading the story of Joseph, I started wondering if it would make sense to summarize the Bible. Since we do not simply read the Bible, but we engage with it, there are a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions, beliefs, and values that are arising. And those are things that are not doing well with rapidity. We have heard many times how God time is not our time. And I'm sure we all have experienced God taking time to deliver an answer despite our urge. However, I wonder if God takes time, not because God needs the time, but because we need that. Because in order to make God the focus in our life, we need to experience our lives with God. And this cannot be done within 24 hours. It takes time. If we look at the relationship in our lives that are the most meaningful, the strongest ones are the ones formed along the time over time, nourished over time. For it requires time for human beings to stop trying to impress the other person, and even more time for us to be able to reveal our real self. We bond when we meet in our vulnerabilities. Joseph's life is a roller coaster. Favorite child, betrayed by his brothers, imprisoned, re-established and restored as an adult. These are experiences of a lifetime. And in all of this, God is walking with him, nourishing him and sustaining him. When his brothers appear before him, 
Joseph takes a moment to look at his past life. And in doing so, he can join the dots together and see how God has been present and at work all along. I wonder how the story would have developed if Joseph had met his brothers at a different time. Would he have showed the same kindness and forgiveness? The endurance of God's presence in his life, their long-term relationship, make Joseph's heart ready for restoration, making him willing to reconnect with his family and reestablish broken relationships, rather than search for revenge. In retrospect, he can see how he has never been alone, for God has always been there, guiding him throughout the ups and downs. Friends, when we are waiting for God's answer, let us be reminded that God is already answering us and that we will probably see that as we keep on walking with God through life. Amen. Let us sing together, Father, I place in your hands. This Sunday, the Methodist Church is thinking particularly about students. And we will be offering a prayer of intercession for students and also for new lecturers from the Methodist resources. And this will be followed by another prayer. And there is a response to both prayers. When I say, God of all wisdom, Please, will you respond, hear our prayer. God of all wisdom, 
hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for students who are in their first year at university. In Jesus, you lived and grew as a human, and you knew what it was to leave the place of childhood to begin your life in the world. Guide new students as they learn to balance the stresses and joys of independence. Meet them by your spirit in new friendships and new discoveries and comfort them when they are feeling far from home. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for students in the middle of long courses. You who are ageless and eternal are the source of all patience and perseverance. Help those who have so much work to do to persist in their studies without feeling overwhelmed. Grant them clear minds to find time for joy, laughter, and for pursuing passions outside their subjects. Bless those whose calling is to let their studies go. Free them from shame and show them the path into their fulfillment. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for all who will graduate this year. You rested when your work of creation was complete. Teach us the balance of labor and refreshment. Guard and guide each student who stays up late to complete work, who rushes to lectures, who reads until they fall asleep. Calm the nerves before exams and give them wise minds as they plan their future. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for all who learn at any age or stage of life. And we pray for all those who pass on knowledge as they teach. You taught your followers over meals, on journeys, and within their working lives. Inspire all who pick up studying again this year, whether they begin in confidence or in fear. Encourage them as they open books and join seminars and Zoom meetings. Help them to know that they are not alone in their nerves and meet their open hearts with the light of your truth. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God of all wisdom and inexhaustible love, there is nothing we can tell you which you do not know already. All of human life is in your care. You know each joy and sorrow. This morning we come to share with you our concerns and worries about your creation, your church, your people, and ourselves. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. We are anxious about the beautiful planet we call our home. How climate change is impacting so many parts of life on Earth. Floods and storms, drought and pollution, fire and famine, and the extinction of whole species. We pray for all who have been affected by Storm Eunice. Help us in our daily lives to live more responsibly. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. We are worried about the church. Disobedience and division have made the church seem irrelevant to many in society. 
apathy and chasing after distractions has weakened the church. We suspect that we do not understand your purposes and the gospel imperative. Help the church in the power of your spirit to show your inexhaustible love to the world. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. We often feel overwhelmed by the tensions in the world between peoples and nations. We watch in dismay at what is happening on the Ukrainian border. We see the endless flight of refugees driven from their homes by violence and economic hardship, rising seas and drought. We hear the angry rhetoric of hate and we feel helpless and afraid. We pray for your peacemakers in the world and help us to see how our concern can make a positive change. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. We share with you our friends and families we are concerned about the things which are hurting them and making them sad. We are delighted by the joys and healing which are a blessing to them. We think about them now and ask that they may know how much they are loved by us and by you. God of all wisdom and inexhaustible love. You know our most intimate thoughts, our worries and pains, our hopes and pleasures. Guide us in your ways. Inspire us with your wisdom. Surround us with your love. Bring healing. Bring hope, bring peace. God of all wisdom, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Each week, in many different ways, we bring our offerings for the work of the church. We offer Money, but not just money, our lives, our time, our energies, our inspiration. And we pay our money in different ways, through our bank accounts, through cash. And so today, now, we offer those gifts to God. Loving God, take all that we bring that our gifts in many different ways may be used in your service to proclaim your love to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us sing together our final hymn, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love.
I apologize, we had this morning some problem with the PowerPoint, so I apologize for the word missing. Um, I wonder if we have to do it more often so that we can create our own hymns. So let us receive the benediction. God, thank you that we are loved and forgiven by you. We know it is hard to love those who have hurt us. Give us your strength. Help us to love our enemies. Help us to do good to those who hate and hurt us. Help us to know when we have hurt others. And help us to recognize your presence into our lives and walk step by step with you. And so let us now go in love in the power of God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.